Hi there. My name is Matt Martin. Uh, thanks for joining us again today for the 21 Days of Prayer. If this is your first time, we're using the acrostic pray, P-R-A-Y. P is for praise, R is for repent, A is for ask, and Y is for yield. Our pattern each day is to do four segments, one for each letter of the acrostic. After each segment, we'll do a short time of prayer together. And after that, if you wish, you may pause the video to spend some extended time in prayer alone. I assure you, we'll still be here when you get back. So our text today is from Psalm 19. Psalm 19 is a psalm of David, and ultimately David's prayer is that his life would be pleasing to God. As Jesus' followers, our prayers and heart's desire is that we would please God in every way. For the first letter of the acrostic P, David is praising God for his word. In Psalm 19, 7 to 10, David writes, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. God's law is the reflection of his perfection. David is praising God for his teachings, rules, laws, commands, and their incredible benefits. They are perfect, trusted, right, and fair. They give us strength, wisdom, and happiness. They are more valuable than gold and sweeter than honey. We live in a world that is increasingly imperfect, unsure, wrong, impure, unclean, untrue. God's word is an incredible, beneficial gift to his people. Like David, we should start each day praising God for giving us his word and showing our appreciation to God by spending time in it, in it each day. Then we can add the value of gold and the sweetness of honey to our lives so that we can become a reflection of God's perfection. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for your eternal, powerful, perfect word. Thank you for the structure and goodness and value that it gives to us, your people. Father, help us encourage each other in your truth. Thank you for your words that are trustworthy. In Jesus' name, amen. For the second letter in our acrostic R, the repent is, Lord, help us to see and turn from our mistakes. In verses 11 and 12, David says, Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is a great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. David is concerned with his hidden faults. He recognizes God's law is the only benchmark to truly judge ourselves. Because our humanity is incapable of genuine virtue. David is repenting of sin he is unaware of. We all have sin that we are unaware of. We all have blind spots. David's confession is that without God's word, we cannot discern our own hidden errors. He realizes his personal moral compass is inadequate to warn him and protect him from his hidden faults. The Bible uses many analogies describing how it exposes our sinfulness. It's a lamp, a light, a mirror, a purifying furnace, and a refining fire and many other analogies. But only God's law has the purity and power to expose our hidden faults, our fetishes, our sins, our darknesses, all the hidden crumbs under our moral couch cushions. James writes, when you look into God's perfect law that sets people free, pay attention to it. If you do what it says, you will have God's blessing. Never just listen to his teaching and forget what you hear. The question is, like David, 
Do we want to be free? Do we want to be innocent? Do we want the promised reward? James says, act, listen, and remember. Let's pray for God's word to expose our hidden sins so that we can enjoy the rewards. Father, like David prayed, please protect us from hidden faults. We live in a culture that offers more access to secret sin than at any other time in human history. Father, where sin is abundant, your grace is more abundant. Please give us grace in the amount necessary to protect us from doing what we know to be wrong. Amen. For the third letter of our acrostic A, David's ask is for protection from presumptuous sin. In verse 13, he writes, Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Presumptuous sins are deliberate sins. They are more akin to premeditated murder than manslaughter and carry much heavier penalties in our lives. Willful sin says, we answer to no one but ourselves. The sad commentary is when David sinned with Bathsheba, he was deliberate, intentional, and presumptuous. David's servant tried to warn him, and David's answer, bring her to me, said, I'm king, and I answer to no one. What a tragic mistake for a godly man to prophesy of his own fate. David allowed presumptuous sin in his life and became guilty of a great and horrific transgression. He sinned against Bathsheba, Uriah, his family, his country, and most importantly, against his God. What a tragedy. Paul warned the Galatians, he said, we have freedom now because Christ made us free. So stand strong in that freedom. Do not go back into slavery again. Let's pray. Father, please protect us from willful sin. Willful sin presumes we answer to no one but ourselves. Father, we know that no one will stand, that everyone will stand before a holy God and give an account for every word, deed, thought, and action. Help us to live blameless lives and remain innocent of all transgressions. Amen. The last letter in our acrostic Y, David pleads and yields his words and thoughts to God. In verse 14, he says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. David's objective in Psalm 19 is that his life would wholly reflect God's holiness and attributes in the same way God's creation and God's law reflect God's holiness and attributes. David wants his life to be wholly pleasing to God. He wants his life to be a reflection of God's protection. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that with divine help, we can be pure and free from sin. Not sinless, but not under sin's dominance and control. Father, like Paul prayed for the Colossians, may we be filled with the knowledge of your will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so we may walk in a manner that's worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of You. Thank You for Your Word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. There is nothing more refreshing than freedom from the control of sin and living a life that pleases the Lord. May God's word continue to refresh you today as you enjoy the sweetness of blameless living. As we close here, a couple of friendly reminders. 
Remember to participate in the 21 days of prayer. If you've missed some, you can go back. The videos are posted on YouTube. Also, please join us again Sunday night at 5 p.m. for prayer. We had a great time this past Sunday. Love to have you back. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing day.